Hi, I'm Gustavo Vinagre. I'm director of Vilma, which is a film about Vilma Azevedo, which is here. She's a writer and an actress now. And we are really happy to be premiering the film at Forum. Meu nome é Edivina Azevedo Ribeiro. E a família me chama Divina. Então eu tive a ideia, quando eu fui escrever contos eróticos, de pôr o nome, de, o pseudônimo de Vilma, que é Vil e Má. Eu não sendo divina, eu podia escrever qualquer coisa que a família não ia nem saber. Agora ele é culpado <risos> de eu ficar conhecida. E após servir de tapete para que em minha língua seja sentido o suor, e sabor de seus divinos pés. Servilmente, Adalberto. Meu nome é Vilma Azevedo, estou com 74 anos. Eu segui a carreira de escritora, que desde pequena eu tinha vontade de escrever, e fui considerada a rainha literária do sado masoquismo no Brasil todo. Na década de 70, de 80, de 90, eu fiz muito sucesso. Hi, and welcome to the 34th Teddy Award. My name is Jan Felix Wuttig, and I'm here with director Gustavo Vinagri and writer Vilma Acevedo to talk about their film Vilma. Hi. Hi. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. Okay. Um, I, well, I, I like a lot the fact that I uh, sat for the movie and I just was just captured by the fact that it was just told these two stories and I just couldn't kind of stop watching it mm -hmm. because it was so, so tenseful. Mm -hmm. um, but there is sort of these two personalities in the film mm -hmm. which are kind of intertwined in a way. Um, maybe you could describe to us um, how you how you kind of um, connected these two in the narrative. Okay, I'll first translate to her and then I'll answer and then if she has something to mm -hmm. say. Ele falou que ele ficou muito é, interessado pelo filme tanto todo que o filme tem uma tensão e que o filme tem essas duas personalidades e, e qual era a ideia original de pegar essas duas personalidades suas e, e misturar no filme. Eu agora vou responder. Um, since my first uh, short film, which is called Film for a Blind Poet, which is a film about a blind SNM poet from São Paulo, which is Glauco Matoso, um, I was really interested about documenting um, let's say, fake people, like, I know he, he, his name to write is Glauco Matoso because he has a glaucoma and, how do you say that in English, pseudonym? Yeah. Um, when you choose a name to write, oh, yeah, yeah. and you create a person or a personality for that. And to me, like in documentary, I always research what are like the desires and dreams of a character and so I'm really interested about these characters that are capable to create a whole other life to themselves and when they create those lives they start existing in a way so to me that is also part of reality so it's also a documentary mm -hmm. and yeah I'm really interested in that line where it all kind of blurs between fiction and reality and to me those characters that are artists like herself and Glauco who writes poetry and are capable of creating a whole universe in their heads they are really like my type of character because I think they can give me exactly that the space where reality and fiction start to collide and everything becomes like the same. There's no difference between yes. dream and reality. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. And how did you go about um, kind of uh, acting out the scenes? Did you go through all your material mm -hmm. and then just sort of pick stories? Or was it, 
Um, did you have any other sort of approach? Or mm -hmm. was there? I, it was actually this film I started doing in 2014. I didn't know if it was going to be a short or a feature. And it was like my first experience trying to do something bigger with just one character, which is something I kept doing in my two other features. And so it took me like six years to really try to understand what I shot and how to make the stories, to put it all together, making kind of a sense. And I think it, I like chose the stories based on what she told me about her life and also about the short stories. I like the, the other actress was there to read the short stories for her so she would remember and keep telling the stories. And, but I think I had in like in the six years accept that all these memories are like mixed in a way because I, in, the, in the set I tried to split. Vilma is doing the first day of shooting and I'm going to interview the character Vilma and in the second day I'm going to interview Edivina and her, about her real life. Mm -hmm. And I think I like in the editing I had to accept that that wasn't that uh, that clear because I think both of these women inspired each other and kind of uh, yeah mixed of course yeah mm -hmm. and there's so many different similarities in a way you know they have story about the husband you have uh, stories about early childhood mm -hmm which sort of go together mm -hmm. <clears throat> and you're not able to distinguish all mm -hmm. the time mm -hmm. specifically to who it belongs. Ele me perguntou como que eu escolhi as histórias que ficaram no filme e que tem histórias que se espelham na primeira parte e na segunda, tipo a história do marido, do primeiro orgasmo ou da infância, que parece que tem histórias que tem alguma similaridade, mas que a divina conta de um jeito e a Vilma conta de outro. Porque eu era jornalista na minha cidade. Na época da repressão, uhum. o prefeito me mandou sumir de lá. Quando eu fui para o Rio, fazia uns três anos que meu marido era doente. She said she was a journalist uh, when she lived in the city she was born, and that the mayor there uh, in the dictatorship started like uh, running after her because she used to say things about him at the newspaper. And then she changed, she moved to Rio, and você mudou para o Rio? Eu mudei para o Rio e tinha, meu marido ficou 10 yeah. anos na cama. And her husband ligado. really was like 10 years in a bed, tinha paralyzed. tinha pequenos para criar. And she had to raise two children. E eu mudei o meu nome, eu pus Edi Ribeiro. So she changed her name. Eu registrei no sindicato. Dos, dos jornalistas da ABI, Associação Brasileira de Imprensa. She officially changed her name as a journalist so that the mayor wouldn't know where she was. Trabalhei muito sob esse pseudônimo para que o prefeito nunca soubesse onde mm -hmm. eu estava. She worked a lot as a journalist with this other name. Aí eu consegui Not... entrar na Block, mm -hmm. maior editora de jornais mm -hmm. e revistas na época no Rio e Quando eu entrei, eu vi que o campo erótico pagava melhor. E then she managed to go in inside the, uh, a big uh, newspaper magazine, uh, one of the biggest uh, editorial houses of newspaper magazines in Rio. And then she realized that if she wrote erotica, then she would be paid more, and she had to raise melhor. her children. E não tinha ninguém, nenhum jornalista mm -hmm. queria assumir essa tendência sadomasoquista. And she said nobody was speaking about Asanamen by that time. E eu comecei a aprender, comecei a estudar o assunto, ler obras desde a vida do Marquês de Sade, Sacha Erbazoc, tudo que se referia a esse assunto, estudei muito e fiz duas matérias para a revista. She said she started researching all about Asanam and reading everything about it. E então fui contratada para uma editora que estava lançando uma revista altamente erótica, mais do que a Eliela, mm -hmm. que era da Block. 
Então eu fazia contos eróticos. Eu pegava a carta do leitor e tudo que ele dizia que gostava, eu dizia que eu também gostava. She said she transformed. She started communicating with the readers of this magazine, and then she would transform their desires that they wrote to her in letters, in short stories. Lendo a vida do Marquês de Sade, eu descobri que ele nunca foi sádico na realidade. She said, in, saying that Sade, how do you say Sade? Um, Marquês de Sade. How do you say that? I don't know how, the, how to the accent. Ele nunca foi mal. He, he was never bater, tirar yeah. sangue. He nada. was never a sadist. Cada livro que ele escreveu foi enfrentando ou a sociedade, ou a realeza, ou a religião. Uh -huh. Então, em cada obra dele, você sabendo como ele foi criado, você vai descobrir quem é que ele está afrontando uh -huh. naquele momento. She's saying that each book of him, he's like uh, making a statement against uh, or the church or the, or the government or... Então eu comecei a escrever um livrinho chamado uh, Sade para Sábios. So she started writing a book called Sade for the Wise. Porque os ignorantes não querem nem saber quem ele foi realmente, como gente, como ser humano. Mm -hmm, because people don't, don't know who he was as a human being. Mm -hmm. E então eu comecei a descobrir que essas pessoas que são sadomasoquistas estavam com medo. Por quê? Tem muitos que é do lado do Marquês de Sade, mm -hmm. que gosta de apanhar, gosta de fazer coisas incríveis. E outro lado quer o erotismo, o mm -hmm. lado bom, o lado amoroso. Mm -hmm. O lado gostoso, a brincadeira, o teatrinho. Você está dizendo que a S&M pode ser like uh, loving e like a playful e joyful e not not the mean S&M that she separates from this one. Então eu cresci muito profissionalmente, porque mm -hmm. no Brasil não tinha ninguém falando a respeito. Mm -hmm. Ele sabe quem foi o Enfield? Mm -hmm. So she's saying that she grew by the time when she started writing this short story, she managed to raise her children and have us uh, because before that she had many problems with uh, having a job and everything. Mm -hmm. So she eu falei que você passou por muita dificuldade uh, antes de se Sim. estabelecer assim. Vamos ver o que ele vai That's perguntar certo. agora. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh. Okay, and um, <clears throat> what was important to you that um, that is portrayed about your work in the film? É, o que que era importante para você que tivesse representado sobre o seu trabalho nesse filme? Porque quando eu parei de escrever sadomasoquismo, eu comecei um autobiográfico. Uhum. E eu, ele captou muita coisa do autobiográfico, que agora eu quero editar. Uhum. Isso para mim foi importante. Ela está dizendo que ela está há muito tempo agora escrevendo uma autobiografia e que ela pensa que no filme há muito a ver com como ela está escrevendo seu novo livro. Ok. E como... As you said, there's also this other actress, mm -hmm. uh, Juliana Gautin, yeah. yeah. um, and she's sort of sitting behind, kind of reading the stories, mm -hmm. and you sit there and you sort of at little spots kind of correcting her mm -hmm. about the stories. Mm -hmm. um, maybe you could tell us how that actually kind of played out, how, mm -hmm. how was the play between uh, Juliana and, and Vilma. Okay. Actually, I... I knew Juliana because she lived in Brazil for 10 years and she used to be an actress in a theater group I, I knew and then I called her the day before and, and said could you come because I, I was kind of not knowing for sure that I could have a film with just one person and I thought well maybe she could help reading the short stories and 
she could be like some kind of a slave or maybe I could play with the desire of Vilma to have someone playing her and that so I present her as uh, a, an actress that is like studying her for a film and because also Vilma didn't believe that the film could be <laughs> like she's sitting in a in a in a in a chair so I was like no this isn't the film yet maybe it's just we are just investigating something and this is the actress who will play you so it was sort of a game but after I realized she knew that was the real film mm -hmm. for conversations that we had and then I think um, Julian didn't know anything about her or about the story she wrote and I think there's lots to do with that also like with her surprise and being in that environment and reading those stories some of them are really heavy like the suicidal letter mm -hmm. the guy who wants to, to die and yeah I think naturally uh, they created like something I think they look alike a bit and she being in the back I think like she kind of represents like her unconsciousness like where she can pick memories and stories and yeah and it's there like in the back and sometimes she loses completely the head mm -hmm. and I think that's also is telling something that I don't know for sure what it is, but <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think she plays an important role yeah. in the film. And I also felt that very strongly that her role sort of in certain moments changes mm -hmm. in a way. She puts on the mask mm -hmm. and then she's sitting uh, by, by your armchair kind of holding, mm -hmm. holding the teacup mm -hmm. in which it is sort of, and, and then it has classical music on top mm -hmm, of it, mm -hmm. in which it seemed to me that she came into the scene and she sort of switches from being in the back and mm -hmm. sort of embodies in a way that that um, that image of the slave in a sense. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, and it's funny, yeah, because in that scene she's like the slave serving the the water for her to take the mm -hmm. pill but at the same time she's like this queen of snm but she is like fragile also having to take her medicine for the for the the pressure and yeah i really like that scene because i think it, it exposes something that she hadn't shown yet in the film uh -huh. like her human nature, mm -hmm. her fragility, and yeah. Yeah, and I have to ask because these stories are incredible to a degree. They are so so tenseful that it makes you just want to see more and mm -hmm. more, and just just by that very minimal setup, even. Um, have there been any influences in in S and M literature to your work? I mean, I, I sort of I, I'm no expert on the topic, but it seemed to me that some were kind of um, kind of giving back to to like Marquis de Sade mm -hmm. and stories like that. Mm -hmm. But maybe that's just. Ele falou que suas influências para escrever sobre sabe masoquismo, Marquis de Sade, Masoch, os dois. Masoch. Porque and, eu descobri mm -hmm. que existe o Sade com o Dolph. Mm -hmm que existiu na época da Inquisição em nome de Deus, nas guerras em nome da pátria, os policiais em nome da lei, os bandidos a proveito próprio. E existe mm -hmm. o sábio... She's saying there is the mean S&M, like, like, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't remember what she said. Uh, Esse... Como é? A pus policiais a serviço? Em nome... That, that, that the mean S&M is like practiced by policemen in, in the name of law or the, 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 the thieves uh, for themselves or the state. Esses devem ser punidos pela lei. Mm -hmm. 
and that they should be punished by law. Yes. Existe o sádio psicopático que deve ser tratado pela medicina. Mm -hmm. She saying there is like the os SNM, the psycho SNM that should be treated by medicine. Os estupradores, the rapists, zoófilos, the, the pedófilos e muitos mais. Deve ser tratado pela medicina. Be treated by medicine. E existe o sádico erótico que gosta de uma brincadeirinha, mm -hmm. de um teatrinho, que mm -hmm. não prejudica ninguém. And that's saying there is like the erotic uh, SNM that it's not harmful to anyone. É um erotismo light. Mm -hmm. That she's saying that. Então eu comecei a escrever sobre isso. Pegava a carta do leitor, porque é impossível uma pessoa saber tanto sozinha. Mm -hmm. Eu não sou gênio nenhum. Mm -hmm. Então eu pegava a carta do leitor e escrevia como se eu tivesse vivido aquilo mm -hmm. com ele. She was saying that she exchanged a lot of messages with the readers and that through that she got to know many types of SNM and that she would then recreate things at her mind and at the stories. E eu dizia para os leitores que eu tinha escravos sexuais e cada mês eu contava o que eu fazia com cada um deles. And she created stories for Vilma saying that she would meet the the readers and saying each month uh, which thing she did that month with each one of her slaves. Depois de 10 anos, meu marido faleceu. Então, and eu, her husband died after 10 years. Entre as cartas que eu tinha, eu escolhi aquele que mais gostava e entendia de sado masoquismo para eu poder aprender com ele. After her husband died, she chose the the reader she know knew that knew best about SNM so she could learn with him now that she was free of her marriage. E aí nos apaixonamos. And then she fell in love with him. E ele quis deixar da mulher, de uma uh -huh. filha, para viver comigo. Uh -huh. And then he wanted to marry her, but he was already aceitei. married. Okay. Entre as cartas que eu tinha, eu conheci um alemão. She said, she, among those letters she had from the readers, she met a German guy. Ele foi dono de uma grande indústria de biscoitos That was a Brasil. really big... Uh, I don't know how to translate that. Uh, he was a, a big uh, industry guy uh, that had like some selling, I don't know, uh, selling whatever, something. Okay. <laughs> não, porque eu não sei traduzir, eu falei mais ou menos o que era. Vai. Então, ele me proporcionou muitas viagens e com ele, que eu não sei inglês, nunca tive vontade de aprender. She said she, she traveled a lot with that German guy because he had money and then, but ele, she never learned English because she never wanted. É, eu conheci muitos países, mm -hmm. mas Alemanha nunca, porque ele queria yeah. me trazer e eu tinha medo de vir para cá, não sei porquê. And that he wanted to bring her here, and, but that this is her first time here and they never managed to come together. O, o primeiro escravo que então gostava de torturas físicas, eu não gostava muito. And that was her first slave that re really really liked uh, to be punished physically and that that was something new for her that she really did not exactly liked. Mm -hmm. Mas por amor que eu amei, but for love she eu fazia aquilo que eu She falei no filme. Him. Eu punha no papel, ou quando eu vestia minha roupa, eu me sentia Vilma Azevedo. E por amor, For eu love, fazia she would muita... like be dressed like Vilma Azevedo, and then she would be eu... that character and be able to inflict that pain at, at him. E então, durou muitos anos esse relacionamento. So she, that, that was a long time relationship with that German. Mas eu sempre respeitei a família dele. But she was always respectful to his e, family because então, he was married. Eu, eu, no primeiro capítulo do meu autobiográfico, eu falo sobre a minha infância, sobre a minha vida, sobre a doença do meu marido, a passagem política da repressão em São José dos Campos. 
She's saying that she's writing her her book now and that she talks all about that and all about her childhood and dictatorship in Brazil and it's gonna be like a really big story okay. since her childhood. Yeah. A segunda parte eu vou falar isso que eu estou te dizendo sobre a vida da jornalista Vilma Azevedo nesse meio. That in this book she's gonna talk about the life of her as a journalist in, in this thing. E quando eu me converti, and aquela when, história da boate que eu me converti, say, when she became religious, eu prometi nunca mais escrever she had promised nada disso. Never more to write about anything else. Então, eu sabia que eu ia perder o emprego como Vilma Azevedo. Mm -hmm ia ter dificuldade de viver com um salário mínimo que não é nada. She said she would she know she would have many money difficulties when she left e falei, as an animal. nem que seja preciso morar numa favela, eu não vou escrever mais essas coisas. And e then parei she, 20 anos. She stopped for 20 years writing and she went living in a favela. Só que as editoras pensaram que eu morri. She saying that now she's trying to uh, come back and and edited this new book about her life. Reeditaram mm -hmm. meus livros e estão vendendo nos sebos. Mm -hmm. Caro. Mm -hmm. And she's saying that she she has many books, old books that are being sold uh, now for for higher prices than then because they are really rare. Então Vamos deixar eu... ele contar. É, contando mm -hmm. a história. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, I'll be buying the book when it comes out. Ele falou que vai comprar o livro. Então, eu vou agora editar o autobiográfico e trocar a capa dos três para poder proibir aquelas obras. She's saying she's re, re, she's publishing this new book. Okay. E gostaria de vê-lo traduzido em outras línguas. And that she wants it translated to German. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, I think. That's it okay. for the moment. That's thank it. you. Thank yeah. you for being here. Thank you for being part of this. And thank you, uh, thank you for the movie. Oh, thank it was you. really great. Thank good you. experience. Very good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>